Hi everyone! Depending on how complicated the final geometry on your models is, there might be instances in which you will have to apply multiple materials to an object. So to do that, you need to remember that materials are applied at the face level of the objects. So we're actually looking, taking into account the normal direction of our um, faces in order to apply materials. Now with that in mind, what I want to do is use this model of the rocket to apply two different types of maps, one to the left and one to the right. To do so, what I want to do is I want to select the object, and the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I don't have any underlying UVs that, I, that might be there by accident, created before, or that got um, inherited from the original shape of the object, which in this case was a box. So let me go into that UV mapping options, go to UV editor, and when that opens, I do see that there's some kind of mapping applied to this object. So I want to remove that uh, shell. To do so, I want to go ahead and right click on it and go to the UV shell from the flyout menu, select the UV map and hit the delete key on the keyboard. That removes the mapping, but you'll notice that my object's still there. So I don't have, I didn't affect anything on the geometry of the object. Now with that done, let me go ahead and close this window really quick. In, in order to apply different materials to the object, I need to select, like I said before, the faces. So I'll go ahead and right click and go to face mode and I'm going to switch my view to the front viewport. I'm going to zoom into this object and then I'm going to go ahead and select, let's say, the left side of the object in this in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and select, drag a selection across this and you'll notice that by doing that I sometimes skip some of these. So I want to go in and make sure that I have the entirety of the geometry selected. So with that done, let me go back to my perspective viewport, make sure that I did do indeed have that entire area selected. And with that done, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and apply a material to this. So I'll simply go ahead and right click on it and go to my assigned favorite material. In this case, I want to apply a simple blend. So with that done, you'll notice that I got some specularity on my object on the left side of the object, but my right remains really dull. That means that I have my uh, the default Lambert material on this side, but the other half has the blend material. You will notice also that I have the blend material node appear on my op, on my attributes window, so I can go ahead and at this time rename this material. So I'll call it, this is the left side, so I'll call it left matte, and I'm going to apply a change in color so that you guys can see that basically the material was only applied to that side of the object. Then with that done, what I want to do is I want to reverse my selection. I want to inverse my selection to select the rest of the faces on the other side. And I want to do that by going select, inverse, or control shift I. When I do that, the other side got selected. I can then right click on it, go to assign favorite material, and I'm going to apply another blend to that. It can be any material, by the way. I'm just simply applying blends because that's the easiest thing. So I can go ahead at that point and apply a different color to it so you guys can see that two separate materials have been applied to the object. Now, this is materials as the base of the material. Actually, the, con the, the way to connect that material to the object is based on the UV uh, values. Now, remember, I deleted the UV shell from this object. So the materials are applied based on this uh, face selection, but they have no orientation. They don't know which way, if I were to apply a map, that map should be placed onto the surface. So to do so, I need to bring back the UV mapping. I need to create UV mapping. In this case, however, because the maps are, I deleted the maps, I need to go ahead and select where I'm going to be applying those maps from. So if I look at my coordinate system down here on the lower left-hand corner, I can see that I will be mapping based on the x-axis. So notice that is the axis that is perpendicular to where my planar mapping would be applied to these two sides. And as I've said in class, I usually start with planar mapping because it's the one that gives me the default settings that I can play with and modify to my liking. Now, sometimes, like in, in a case like this, you might look at this and be like, well, why can I, why can I not apply a circular, I mean, a, a cylindrical mapping? You could try that if you want to. I find it easier to work with planar mapping to begin with. So with this area still selected, remember I haven't deselected this area, the, left, the right side of my rocket, by the way, I'm going to rename that material right mat. I, I want to go ahead and apply the UV shell to that side from that from that planar option, which is the x-axis. So I'm going to go to my UV editor, open it up, and with that area still selected, I want to go to the create 
drop down menu in that UV editor window. Now you notice that you have the options to create different types of UVs as we have seen in class. You can also get them from the UV drop down menu. You have that those options here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say create planar options. I'm going to reset that window, the settings on that window, and then I'm going to make sure that I have the X axis as my projection window. When I do that and click apply, you will notice that I get both a map on my first quadrant for that set of faces that I have selected. And in my model, I do have the little gizmo, the little planar gizmo. You see that little window. That's the planar gizmo that is saying that your map has been projected on this side of the object from that perspective, from the X axis. So with that done, what I want to do at this point is, okay, let me go ahead and right click on this shell, select the shell. And then I want to go ahead and press the W key and move this a little bit out of the way. Then just a little bit. And the reason why I'm doing that is because at this point, I want to go ahead and flip my selection to the opposite end of the object. So let me move these two windows out of the way really quick. And I want to go ahead and with the object still selected, go select inverse. And you'll notice that I brought my selection back to the other side of my object. So this one has a shell, but this doesn't. So what I want to do now is with that selection made, I want to go ahead and say create planar options, which will open up the window that I had left open before. Make sure that I have mapping based on projecting from the X axis. That's the perpendicular uh, normal to my selection. And I want to go ahead and click on project. Now that creates a second map, as you can see a second UV shell, second gizmo. And if you look at my UV window, then I have two shells, one that's been assigned originally, and then this second one, which is this one right here, that is the other side. That's the reason why I went ahead and moved that up so that you guys can see that there were two separate shells, basically. So now that I have two shelves, then I can go ahead and I know now that I have projection onto this window and that if I apply a map onto this window, onto this side of the object and to the left side, and if I apply a map, then the map will be applied based on these projections, on this UV mapping. So to do so, let's move this window here for just a second. Let's move it out of the way. And I'm going to go back to my object. Let me right click on the object, go to object mode. And you will notice that if I scroll Scroll over to the right of my um, the nodes on the attributes window for my object. I have not only the Lambert one material, but I also have the left material and the right material attached. All of them attached to the object. So I have multiple materials attached to that object. Now I want to change the color channel in order to import the map into that particular material. So to do so, what I want to do is I want to start, let's say, with the yellow side. That is the right material. I want to go to the color channel and remember I'm looking at the little mapping checkerboard over here. So when I click on that, I get the little create render node window that allows me to either create a new material to apply to that channel or to import any number of mapping of map options that I have. So in this case, I want to import a file. So with that done, it, it changes my, it creates a node into my attributes for that particular channel for the color channel. And that gives me the option to import a file by clicking on the little folder here. Let's say, for example, you lost track of this. Say you click by accident out here and you see nothing on the attributes window. Simply select the object, go into the channel for that particular material, the right material, dig in and you'll find the little folder. So once you have that in there, click on that little folder. It will open up the options to go to your source images folder. And in our case, I want to go ahead and use the red uh, rocket left, I think it's called. No, we're using the, we're changing the right. So let's do a rocket right. So it would be rocket body right. That's the one I would be using. So click open on that. And you'll notice that the map was projected onto my um, UV window. So I can see it there. And if I want to see it on my window here, I need to make sure that I go to the shading option for my viewport and click on hardware texturing there. That way I can see that the actual mapping was applied to the object, as you can see. Now I can modify the position of that based on the position of the UV map over here. So what that means is if I want to move my map up or down, I can go ahead and say, okay, let me select the UV shell for that side, which is this one. 
And if I use the Move tool by pressing W key, I can go ahead and move the position of that mapping. Let me actually reduce the size of this slightly so we can actually see what we're doing. If I move this, I can go ahead and based on the UV mapping that I had created, I can position my artwork. So let's say I want it here. Remember that the UV mapping on Maya only takes into account the very first shell, the zero to one. So from here, from zero to one on the X axis, on the Y axis, let's call it that, and the zero to one on the X axis. So if you're looking at this from that perspective, make sure that you map according to that first quadrant. Let me go ahead and zoom out really quick and move here so you guys can see. So now it only follows that if I go ahead and align the second shell, let's select the second one, zoom in, and I move it up to match the other one, and I make sure that I simply place my second map in the exact same spot, then the second, the other side will have the exact same result. So let's move this around, select the left material node, which is this one, go to its color channel, import the image that I want to map. Let me go ahead and import that image. So I go look for it. And this one will be the left rocket left. So rocket body left, click open, and there it is. So these two maps should match. Let me go ahead and right click on this object mode, deselect it so you guys can see the end result. And as you can see, the images have been mapped seamlessly onto the object. Now, in order to be to to make sure that you match one to the other, you need to make sure that your shelves actually do match on the UV mapping. Because if you move one different from the other, watch what happens. Let me move this one down, for example. You'll notice that let me right click here, object mode, deselect, and you'll notice that this one has proper mapping, but this one has been cut out because I moved the actual UV shell. So you make sure that both of them match and that you have prop appropriate appropriate uh, placement of those UV maps based on the actual model and how the um, the maps match the geometry of your object.